Go Interactive with Rayanne. Rory walked to the farm. He went to see the animals. Rory enjoyed his time in the barnyard. <sighs> Good job, Rayanne. But let's see if we can flesh out a bit more detail on your story. Thanks, Margaret. Uh, Margaret Murphy is from Around Town Tellers, and she's going to help critique my story and tell me what storytelling is all about. So, what advice do you have? Well, first of all, you're kind of tied to that page. So in storytelling, we're going to try and get you off the page. So tell me, who's Rory? Maybe you could start without um, using your sheet. Who's Rory? Uh, Rory's my son. So it's not just about having a passion for storytelling or having a good story, but it's the craft of storytelling as well, correct? Well, that's right. The passion is a huge thing, what you've mentioned. It really is about looking at the heart of the story, why you want to tell it. But the craft is how you get that across. So your main idea, why you're telling the story, but you'd look at Rory and you'd look at the details. Who is it? You'd tell me about your son and who his favorite animals are. The glorious details are what makes story come alive and our connection to that story and the audience, the listener. And why is it so important that we tell our stories, have that face-to-face -face connection in the first place? I think over time, we're starting to realize the importance of coming back to doing just this, connecting in heart-to-heart, face-to-face way, if it's for entertainment, for teaching, because yes, electronics are huge in our world today, but we need to reconnect at a heart-to-heart -heart level and an eye-to-eye -eye level, and that's what storytelling allows us to do, to connect in real time with real people. And why is it important? Like, I started off my story reading a piece of paper. So is that the correct way to do? Should I do that, or should I just go off script, use my hands? How? Great question, Rayanne. And really, stories, of course, that we read, read to children, to ourselves, to, um, you know, to community, fabulous. But the energy shifts when I'm off the page, as it were, when I put away the book or the paper and I share right here, right now, what I want to tell you. So the story is live and from the heart. And I am just telling you the story in person. Mm -hmm. And Margaret Murphy is from Around Town Tellers, and you host workshops and groups every second Friday? That's correct. We're at the Unitarian Hall on town site, and we have the joy of meeting now and from 7.30 to 9.30 on the second Friday of the month. And we celebrate story in a really rich way with storytelling and some music often, maybe some poetry and uh, music. But um, again, it's off the page, and we offer workshops once a year, and we're out in the community now, too. So there are several people that are asking us to come out and share stories in community. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, I've already shared my story. How about, Margaret, you share one of yours? Oh, I'd love to. The story I'd like to share with you is from Clarissa Pinkola Estes, uh, Women Who Run With the Wolves. It's called Three Gold Hairs. Once, when it was deepest, darkest night, the kind of night where the sky is a midnight blue, an old, old man made his way through the forest. And the man was trembling, and his bones were creaking, as if the owls were echoing his same feeling. And in his right hand he held a lantern, and the lantern had a small candle right in the middle of it, and the wick was burning down.